um, where I am today sitting on this platform and to look at how solidarity activists who are not Palestinians, what, how, how they can get involved and how they should get involved in the struggle, uh, what the challenges and what, and what the opportunities are in, in those alliances. Um, I'm a lesbian and I've been involved in Palestine solidarity um, virtually full-time and now more than full-time um, since the beginning of the Second Intifada. And I'm not unique in that respect. There are many um, LGBT queer activists who have chosen to focus on Palestine because it is an issue that crystallizes injustice, oppression, liberation. Um, and so, it, so it's, a, it's a very symbolic and very important struggle for us all. And the reason why I'm on the panel today is probably the role that we played um, during World Pride, um, which took place in London um, in June this year, sorry, July this year. And what had happened, we'd, we'd, we'd been getting a group together to challenge pinkwashing. We'd started challenging a, um, a, a gay art exhibition uh, that, um, that had been sponsored and funded by the Israeli ministry. Um, but really, we hadn't had, we hadn't got our teeth into anything um, until um, Pride. We'd had meetings um, with al Khaz speakers coming over, and we'd, we'd explored the issues with the trade union, um, self-organized LGBT groups, but really World Pride in London in July was where everything um, came together. We had a situation where obviously Tel Aviv had put a lot of energy into using it as an opportunity to push forward the pinkwashing agenda and to push forward the brand Israel agenda. So you had um, two acts coming over from Israel to perform on the, on the stage. You had um, the Tel Aviv tent. You had leaflets saying Tel Aviv, fun, free, fabulous, all over the place. Um, incredible amounts of money spent on that initiative. We had some t-shirts from a union that was very supportive saying no pride in Israeli apartheid. We had these leaflets that unfortunately I wasn't as organized and I've got them, I've got them here, but please do take them. Um, and we just had, you know, we had a group of activists who wanted to march with Palestinian flags to make a presence and to oppose pinkwashing. What we were really stunned at was the level of support we got not just within the crowds that were part of the Pride Parade and, and then rally, but also along the streets as we were walking past. Um, particularly amongst youth, we had the amount of people who wanted to come up, take a load of leaflets to distribute themselves, to take one of the flags to wave, to really get involved in the activities. And finally, when we were doing the video, um, we were asking people to, to give a message of no pride in Israeli apartheid. We had loads of people, we, we had no idea who they were, but they were coming up from the crowd saying they wanted to give a message. And that the level of support there and the understanding out there was absolutely incredible. And I think that's one of the, the, the challenges we have is we often don't, we often underestimate the support out there. Um, and until, in a sense, until you start spreading the message out, you just don't know how much support you can get. So that brings me on to my second point, really, which is the issue around the intersections and the solidarity and the challenge um, for those who have been used to focusing on the fight against their oppression and discrimination. So, for example, um, if someone has been really <coughs> focused on the struggle for, um, for lesbian and gay, bisexual, trans rights, um, but hasn't managed to or hasn't had a history of struggling on behalf of, for, uh, uh, for other, other people's rights. Um, I think they, it poses particular challenges. If you're, if you're coming at it from uh, a perspective where you are, um, for example, a white woman struggling for women's rights, um, you will not necessarily have had an experience of, of stepping back, um, not setting a framework, and not making demands. And I think this is an issue that increasingly we're, we're going to be having to tackle in our movement be, uh, for, you know, for good reasons. It means that the movement is broadening and, 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 um, and diversifying. But I think there has to be an understanding that it, that it is a shift that people need to make. It's not, about, it's not about us. It's about Palestinian rights. It's about our solidarity. And the, Palis and, and the issue around Palestine solidarity, it puts people like myself as a white woman living in, in the global north <laughs> 
I'm part of the oppressors, not the oppressed. And, there, and that needs to shape my response, my solidarity to the struggle. Um, so the second issue I wanted to really cover was the intersection with the struggle against racism and Islamophobia with our, within our own communities. And I hate to use the word community because I don't really believe there is a community, but you know, as shorthand, I'm going to have to describe it as something. Um, but we're all, we're all aware and used to people who claim to speak on our, on our behalf for our community. Um, and we're not a homogenous entity. Um, we are all used to people who are speaking on behalf of us in our community who um, will actively invoke Islamophobia, actively invoke racism, and we're all used to actually challenging that. Um, and I think this, this, is, this is the powerful um, intersection between, between the struggle we're, we're, we're carrying out against um, pinkwashing and the struggle we're carrying out against racism and Islamophobia. It is very much a point of you know, these people do not speak on our behalf, they do not, do not represent us. And Lynn Darwish said a really, um, really interesting comment at the end of her, her speech yesterday, which was, um, she said, um, I really worry about the movement in five years from now, but then I remember we are not all in the same movement. So I think the challenge that comes out from, the, from today and from sessions like this is to create our own movement um, and refuse to be co-opted into the pinkwashing agenda. And just as... We, and pinkwashing is not the only example we've had in terms of refusing to be co-opted into a particular agenda. We all saw what happened around the war um, against Afghanistan, where the, the, the language about Af Afghanistan, the, um, the rationale for intervention was to save Afghan women in Afghanistan. We challenged that, um, and, I, and I think we need to draw on the lessons from the challenge of that and the anti-war movement that was created against war in Afghanistan on pinkwashing. Um, in terms of, I just wanted to talk a few about a few local issues in terms of the, the struggle we've been um, undergoing around Islamophobia in our LGBT queer community um, in London. Um, because, not because I want to sort of obsess about London, but I think there are parallels that can be made. Um, there is an area of London called Tower Hamlets that's got a very uh, large and vibrant Muslim community. And it's been under, I would describe it as, as systematic attack uh, for a number of years. And those attacks um, came to a bit of a head in 2011 with um, some stickers going up that were homophobic stickers um, inside not just Tower Hamlets but other boroughs. Um, but the focus then became the local Muslim community that were, Islamophob uh, were homophobic and the, the danger um, posed by this. Um, there were phrases about no, no, no go zones and um, a threat to organise an East London Pride through the region. It quickly became obvious that who was behind this East London Pride was the English Defence League, the EDL, which is a fascist organisation. Even with, when, when that first started coming out, there were some of um, our leaders, let's put it that way, who refused to, to back down from their support for East London Pride because they, they, they had an explicitly Islamophobic agenda and, it didn't, uh, and it, it, they were forced, their hands were forced after a while to distance themselves from the EDL because it became far too discrediting. But, there, but the, the pressure in terms of, um, of the false claims regarding homophobic attacks um, in Tower Hamlets, actually it wasn't true that, that homophobic attacks had risen higher in Tower Hamlets than in other um, boroughs in London. There were far higher rises in boroughs that did not have a large Muslim community, but this was not newsworthy, this wasn't what was being sold, that it didn't fit into the overall, this overall story about really the threat of Islamophobia comes direct, sorry, the threat from, of homophobia comes directly from the Muslim community. Um, what happened was the community got together inside Tower Hamlets. When I mean community, the, the positive community, there was a pride that was created in September last year, September 2011, that had the Tower Hamlets mayor looked for Rahman speaking, um, that, that basically pulled together on a positive, inclusive basis all of those, um, all of those alliances that need to be that need to be uh, um, brought together. And so there is a possibility, I think, to create a diverse and progressive alliance. 
Um, thirdly, and, and very uh, shortly, because um, I've been told I've got three minutes left, um, I want to talk about intersections and alliances and a bit about the opportunities that we have um, to really push forward this issue of pinkwashing um, in broader spheres. Uh, what we've been doing um, is recognizing that a lot of us have multiple identities. Um, a, lot of a lot of people who are invo involved in Palestine solidarity are not just queer activists, LGBT activists, trade union activists. They have a number of different, different identities that, that, we, that we can then, we can then cross-link with. The trade unions, for example, we've been doing a lot of work as Palestine Solidarity Campaign in terms of pulling them into the struggle for Palestine, explaining to them that just as they were involved in the struggle against apartheid South Africa, this for them should be a key touchstone issue that we need um, their active support. And we're, we've got this advantage in Britain of having self-organized groups within the trade union movement. So there are self-organized LGBT groups that we've been working with on pinkwashing and bringing them into the issue of Palestine as well. Um, and that's been absolutely critical in terms of um, the visibility of the issue as well, getting, getting, um, getting the debate out. Um, then um, the, this also posed the issue around the, the principled alliance that we carried through at, um, at World Pride. Because we had this alliance with, um, with the trade union movement, we were able to really sort of get the message out. We were able to say this isn't just about solidarity with Palestinian queers, this is actually solidarity on Palestine. Our, our, our solidarity is not conditional or dependent on any reciprocation. Our solidarity is about a principled opposition to injustice. Um, and there's a history of that also in Britain um, in the struggle against the, uh, well, in, in support of the, of the miners during the miners' strike in the 1980s, where there was a group of lesbians and gays to support the miners um, that, that basically unconditionally supported the struggle of the miners against the um, conservative government at the time. So finally, I just wanted to finish off with, um, with, with the importance of us being able to play um, an open role. And in a sense, this is the advantage that, that pinkwashing has given us, because we have a hook um, where we can really push the issue of Israeli, Israeli apartheid out to a wider audience. And um, just two, two issues on that I just wanted to raise. Um, one was the Mavi Marmara and Omar Gershon's video. I don't know how many of you saw that video. Basically, he claimed that, um, that he had been, um, he, had been, he wanted to participate in the Freedom Flotilla in 2011, and he was told he couldn't because he was gay. Not only was that video exposed to fake, but also there were a number of us who came out and said, actually, we were on the Freedom Flotilla, we were on the Mavi Marmara, this is not an issue of homophobia. Um, and then secondly, just in terms of the, uh, we had a, a, a contingent on um, the, the Gaza demonstration last Saturday in London. I think this issue around being visible and being out there, and this is not, this is not don't get me wrong, this is not about visibility of Palestinian queers, this is about our visibility um, as, as progressives who support Palestinian rights is absolutely critical. 